So iOS 18 is now available to the public, but I've been running this on my main device for the last few months. So let's delve into the features that stood out to me during this testing period. Now, do note number one, I'm not covering every single change because that would make this video extremely long, but also Apple intelligence features, which was the big AI announcement, aren't available on my 14 Pro Max because I'm a broke boy who doesn't have the latest iPhone, though even those guys don't have access to Apple intelligence yet. It's available later in the year, and if you're wondering, the fancy Siri animation also isn't available yet. With that being said, let's get into my favorite changes I've been able to test, and undoubtedly the first thing that blows you away with iOS 18 are the home screen changes. And this actually was better than rumored. So we can finally place icons anywhere on the home screen. Yes, I can't believe what I'm seeing. You can now have bloody spaces. Wow, this is groundbreaking innovation. But jokes aside, this took way too long for Apple to add. But I'm glad we finally have it. More excitingly though, you can now choose to have dark mode icons. They look very nice. Of course, with previous iOS versions, you could use shortcuts to achieve this. But it was a long convoluted process and I'm glad it's now a native option on iOS. But that's scratching the surface of what Apple's actually letting us do here because you can also tint icons with a color of your choice or even extract colors from your wallpaper, which I did not expect Apple to do. In fact, it low-key feels illegal to have this much customization on the iPhone. I guess it might remind some of you guys of the jailbreaking days, but ultimately more customization is always a nice bonus and these features are going to be extremely popular amongst the general public. That's not all though, because Apple is also letting you use larger icons without labels, and this is what makes the home screen look very clean now since it's minimal, and coupled with the new icons it really gives the iPhone a fresh feel. I haven't changed my home screen in years if I'm being honest, but with these changes, I've actually started playing around with new layouts, and it kind of reminds me of my Android days as a young pleb, because I used to be customizing my phone 24-7 to the max, constantly changing the icons and the arrangement, and I have a feeling I'm going to be doing that often with iOS 18. Also, another cool thing is that you can now change the size of the widget directly on the home screen. So no longer do you have to go through the widget selection tool and find the larger or smaller size you want. It's now much quicker. You know what else is super quick? Subscribing to the channel, of course. It's free and it will bring you the latest about Apple right to the subscription box. So please consider it. It would be appreciated. Join the Saran Bike gang now. Let's now move on to the brand new control center. And I have some mixed opinions about this. So the choice to go with circle icons was certainly an interesting choice because Apple did not change the icons on the home screen. They're still more of a scratch design. And so the UIs here don't really match. In fact, the control center now reminds me more of Xiaomi's Hyper OS. And a non-techie friend of mine said this UI makes my iPhone look like a knockoff model, which is not great. Obviously, I know this is a beta period, so they might tweak the design and it might eventually grow on me. But as of now, I'm not the biggest fan. Now, what I do like is the fact you can now add a move icons in the control center wherever you like. But there is a catch because when I try to make an icon larger, for example, it does add it to a new page which I'm not a fan of. During the leaks period when we heard about this, I did not like this concept. And now using it in person, yeah, I still hate it. I keep accidentally triggering the pages when I'm trying to leave Control Center, and so I just wish it was one page that had infinite scrolling instead. Regardless of that, I do like the new customization tools, of course, and developers will be able to provide tools for their apps in the Control Center, so when iOS 18 goes public, you can, of course, have a wide range of toggles, which is very awesome. Also, the lock screen toggles can finally be customized. Why did it take Apple so long to add this? I don't know. But anyways, I'm glad it's finally here. Though I can't lie, I haven't changed the toggles just yet because I don't know what to add. I think I'll keep the torch one, but replace the camera toggle for the Apple TV remote toggle. Now let's talk about photos. So this has seen a massive redesign in iOS 18. It's basically been unified into a single view with the photo grid at the top that views the entire library and collections organized by theme below. At the top by default, you have recent days, which shows you photos from the last few days as one might expect. But what's nice is that things like receipts are filtered out automatically. You can swipe right from the grid and you'll see a new carousel with featured photos and other favorite collections which is very nice and it automatically refreshes to surface new images you can decide which collections are shown and in what order there's also a filter button that allows you to hide screenshots and you can pin your favorite trips pretty cool changes on the whole and i've seen some criticize the changes but to be honest i love them the photos app is pretty good moving to messages tap backs have been redesigned and users can now react with any emoji wow what a revolutionary feature apple themselves have come up with right 
No, this is actually available on WhatsApp and Telegram for years. And so well done for catching up, Apple. And talking about catching up, users can also schedule messages to send later, as well as format text with options like bold, italics, underline, etc. Again, features that have been standard on other messaging platforms for years. You can also now use text effects to emphasize words and phrases with automatic suggestions, which is fun. But what's truly game changing is the ability to send and receive messages with satellite connectivity. This was previously only available in emergencies, but now if you don't have a signal, you can still text your family and friends, which honestly that in itself could save life still, but also is insanely cool because no longer do you have to rely on Wi-Fi and 5G to stay in touch, you could be anywhere on the planet and you should still be able to contact your loved ones. Wild. Now with Safari, there are two main changes. One is highlights, which as the name does suggest, gives you key information and links from a site. So for example, if you're looking up a new restaurant, it will automatically display a card showing you how to get there via maps and a phone number. There is also upgrades to the read option with a table of content and a much more concise summary before you start reading. That's gonna be clutch when I'm trying to catch up on all of these WWDC announcements because Apple gave us a jam-packed event. Moving to passwords, Apple's now made a separate passwords manager application with iOS 18, which is a brilliant move. I'm surprised they did not do this sooner because all your passwords being tucked away in settings is quite clunky and so separating that into its own app, like of course, one password and last pass is greatly beneficial for consumers. Inside the app, there's group sections for specific things like Wi-Fi passwords and pass keys, for example, and you can easily share passwords with your family members. You will also be able to use this app on Windows if you want to put yourself through that misery. And if you're using a third party password manager, you can easily import your passwords into Apple's application. Next, let's talk about AirPods because Apple surprisingly continues to upgrade these in massive ways via a simple soft update. So with AirPods Pro 2, there are now hands-free Siri interactions because there are times where, of course, you're in public and you don't want to look like a crazy man talking to yourself. And so you can now simply nod yes or no to answer to Siri. This feature blows my mind. I'm looking forward to testing this. But yes, if that works, as Apple says, that is truly groundbreaking. There is also voice isolation with AirPods Pro now, which means in windy conditions or areas with loud background noise, people will still be able to hear your voice clearly on calls and that's also a very nice change. Now a few smaller changes. The Wallet app now has redesigned event tickets with it offering helpful information about the venue. For those doing sketchy business, you can now lock apps with Face ID, simultaneously hiding information from Search and Siri. Note's got some major upgrades like live audio transcription, which will be very handy for lectures. You can now automatically also crunch numbers and enhanced dialogue is another neat feature that helps you better hear what's said on screen, especially when there's loud sound effects or music in the background. Finally, you can record and transcribe a phone call directly in the phone app now, which is going to be very clutch when talking to dodgy customer service who might backtrack on what they originally said. Also forgot to mention the calculator app now has a history function. Thank you. The settings app has seen a small redesign with the battery tab at the top now. That's pretty nice. Math Notes also works amazingly well. It's available on iOS as well. And it's basically a hack for those who have math homework on a regular basis. So those are my favorite iOS 18 features so far, guys. And I'm very happy with this update so far. This certainly feels substantial. And thankfully for me, iOS 18 has been stable so far and I'm hoping it stays that way. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching.